Shalom family. It's good to see you all here. I hope you are all having a wonderful day. And I hope none of you are in the path of that Hurricane Lee. I heard it, it made landfall around New England. So and I know I do have some subscribers up in that area. So I hope all is well and you're just making it through. Hopefully, Lee is fast moving and we'll be out of there in no time. All right, y'all. Shalom, family. Shalom to everybody in the chat. All right, let me share my screen. All right. Please give me a one if you can see my screen. Please give me a one. Thank you. Thank you, Emma. All right. <clears throat> Let's... Peace and blessing, family. This is your brother L, another edition of Victory, Success, and Destiny. We're now on day 24 of our 70-day journey. Let's go ahead and get into the scriptures, starting with the laws and commandments of Torah and the Torah laws of the millennial reign of the Messiah in Ezekiel chapter 46. But first, Exodus 30. And thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon of shittim wood shalt thou make it. A cubit shall be the length thereof and a cubit the breadth thereof. Four squares shall it be and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same, and thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. The top thereof and the sides thereof round about, and the horns thereof. And thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about, and two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it by the two corners thereof. Upon the two sides of it shalt thou make it, and they shall be for places for the staves to bear it withal. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, before the mercy seat that is over the testimony where I will meet with thee. And Aaron shall burn thereon sweet incense every morning when he dresses the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at evening, he shall burn incense upon it, a perpetual incense before the Most High throughout your generations. Ye shall offer no strange incense thereon, nor burnt sacrifice, nor meat offering, neither shall ye pour drink offering thereon. And Aaron shall make an atonement upon the horns of it once in a year with the blood of the sin offering of atonement. Once in the year shall he make atonement upon it throughout your generations. It is most holy unto the Most High. When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel after their number, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Most High, when thou numberest them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numberest them. This they shall give every one that passeth among them that are numbered, half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary, a half shekel shall be the offering of the Most High, every one that passeth among them that are numbered, from twenty years old and above shall give an offering unto the Most High. The rich shall not give more, and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when they give an offering unto the Most High to make an atonement for your souls. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel and shalt appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation that it may be a memorial unto the children of Israel before the Most High to make an atonement for your souls. Thou shalt also make a laver of brass and his foot also of brass to wash withal, and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt shall put water therein. For Aaron and his son shall wash their hands and their feet there. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister to burn offering made by fire unto the Most High, so they shall wash their hands and their feet that they die not. And it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even 250 shekels, and of sweet columns, 250 shekels, and of cassia, 500 shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, 
and a, of oil olive a hen, and thou shalt make it a holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil, and thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table and all his vessels, and the candlestick and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the laver in his foot, and thou shalt sanctify them that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy, and thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest office and thou shalt speak unto the children of israel saying this shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations among upon man's flesh shall it not be poured neither shall you make any other like it after the composition of it it is holy and it shall be holy unto you Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his people. And the Most High said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, stack thee in Onika and Galbanum. These sweet spices with pure frankincense of each shall there be a like weight, and thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put of it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, where I will meet with thee. It shall be unto you most holy and as for the perfume which thou shalt make ye shall not make to yourselves according to the composition thereof it shall be unto thee holy for the most high whosoever shall make like unto that to smell thereto shall even be cut off from among his people ezekiel 46 thus saith the most high the gate of the inner court that looketh toward the east shall be shut shut the six working days but on the sabbath it shall be opened and in the day of the new moon it shall be opened and the prince shall enter by the way of the porch of that gate without and shall stand by the post of the gate and the priest shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings and he shall worship at the threshold of the gate then he shall go forth but the gate shall not be shut until the evening likewise the people of the land shall worship at the door of this gate before the most high in the sabbath and in the new moons and the burnt offering that the prince shall offer unto the most high in the sabbath day shall be six lambs without a blemish and a ram without a blemish and the meat offering shall be an afa for a ram and the meat offering for the lambs as he shall be able to give and a hen of oil to an afa and in the day of the new moon it shall be a young bullock without blemish and six lambs and a ram they shall be without blemish and he shall prepare a meat offering an ephi for a bullock and an ephi for a ram and for the lambs according as his hand shall attain unto and a hen of oil to an ephi and when the prince shall enter, he shall go in by the way of the porch of that gate, and he shall go forth by the way thereof. But when the people of the land shall come before the Most High in the solemn feast, he that entereth in by the way of the north gate to worship shall go out by the way of the south gate, and he that entereth by the way of the south gate shall go forth by the way of the north gate. He shall not return by the way of the gate whereby he came in, but shall go forth over against it. And the prince in the midst of them, when they go in, shall go in, and when they go forth, shall go forth. And in the feast and in the solemnities, the meat offering shall be an afa to a bullock, and an ephi to a ram, and to the lambs as he is able to give, and a hen of oil to an ephi. Now when the prince shall prepare a voluntary burnt offering or peace offerings voluntarily unto the Most High, one shall then open him the gate that looketh toward the east, and he shall prepare his burnt offering and his peace offerings as he did on the Sabbath day. Then he shall go forth, and after his going forth, one shall shut the gate. Thou shalt daily prepare a burnt offering unto the Most High of a lamb of the first year without blemish. Thou shalt prepare it every morning, and thou shalt prepare a meat offering for it every morning, the Sith part of an ephi and the third part of a hen of oil to temper with the fine flour a meat offering continually by a perpetual ordinance unto the most high thus shall they prepare the lamb and the meat offering and the oil every morning for a continual burnt offering Thus saith the Most High, if the prince give a gift unto any of his sons, the inheritance thereof shall be his sons, it shall be their possession by inheritance. But if he give a gift of his inheritance to one of his servants, then it shall be his to the year of liberty after it shall return to the prince, but his inheritance shall be his sons for them. Moreover, the prince shall not take of the people's inheritance by oppression to thrust them out of their possession, but he shall give his son's inheritance out of his own possession, that my people be not scattered every man from his possession. After he brought me through the entry, which was at the side of the gate into the holy chambers of the priest, which looked toward the north, and behold, there was a place on the two sides westward. Then he said to me, this is the place where the priest shall boil the trespass offering and the sin offering, where they shall bake the meat offering, that they bear them not out into the utter court. 
court to sanctify the people. Then he brought me forth into the utter court and caused me to pass by the four corners of the court. And behold, in every corner of the court, there was a court. In the four corners of the court, there were four courts joined of 40 cubits long and 30 broad. These four corners were of one measure. And there was a row of building round about in them, round about them four. And it was made with boiling places under the rows round about. Then he said unto me, these are the places of them that boil, where the ministers of the house shall boil the sacrifice of the people. So, hallelujah, we see that all the way from Exodus over to Ezekiel, where he's talking about the new millennium reign of the Messiah, the laws and commandments stay the same from Exodus all the way to the new millennium of the Messiah. So we see that, as the Messiah said, these laws and commandments will not be done away with until heaven and earth passes away. All right. And that doesn't happen till after the thousand year reign of the Messiah. So we see here in the new millennial reign of Christ, how Messiah is going to be uh, the high priest accepting the sacrifices and people will still be dealing with animal sacrifices in the new millennium. But now we don't have a temple and the blood of animals can't cover for our sin. So we have the blood of the lamb, Messiah, our king, who is blameless without blemish. His blood covers for us. When we get into the new millennial reign where he is the high priest on earth in the temple, then all the offerings and sacrifices will be brought to him. Hallelujah. So let's go to the most high in prayer. Most high, holy one of Israel, king of the universe. We come before you and say peace and blessings upon your name, father, for your name is set apart and holy. We come before you like the children of Israel came before Moses when he sprinkled the blood of the animal upon them. And Father, we come and we ask that you would cause the blood of Yeshua to fall upon us and our children's children, because we only overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So, Father, we've gone through your laws and commandments and we plead the blood of the lamb, your only son, Yeshua, over us and over our children so that we can have our sins purged, Most High God, because only the blood of your son, not the blood of animals, only the blood of your son, who is the high priest, can atone for our sins as we endure to Most High will reach your kingdom to where your Messiah, the high priest, will be standing accepting the offerings at our hand, Father. Please let our offering ascend with acceptance to your altar. Please forgive us of the sins we've committed. Hallelujah. All praise to the Most High God. Blessed be he. All right. So, Today, we're going to be uh, speaking about another beast and spirit that we are to crush and conquer. We're going to be talking about the spider viper. All right. The spider viper. Now, what we need to understand about this is that in the spirit realm, many of these uh, spirits are hybrid, meaning they're a mixture of many different animals, many different beasts, many different spirits. So I'm going to take you through some scriptures where we find out about these creatures uh, of the spider viper, where it's part spider, part viper. All right. And this is another spirit and beast that we have to conquer. But first, let me show you what I mean about how in the spirit realm, many of these spirits and beasts are hybrid. Let's go to Revelation 9. It says, and the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locust upon the earth and unto them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing nor, nor any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of the most high in their foreheads. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh the man. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locust were white were like unto horses prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses horses run into battle and they had tails like unto scorpions and there were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months and they had a king over them which is the angel of the bottomless pit who, whose name in the hebrew tongue is abaddon but in the greek tongue half the name apollyon all right so these hybrid creatures that are scorpion and lion and man all in one they are similar to the creature that we're going to be talking about the spider viper 
And just like those creatures I just read about in Revelation 9, they only had power to torment those who did not have the seal of the Most High on their foreheads. So the reason we're going through this discussion over these 70 days is so we can be that set apart people that has the seal of the Most High upon our forehead and the badge of the priesthood upon our heart like Melchizedek so that when these spirits and creatures and beasts and men try to attack us, we will be able to slash them and burn them. We will be able to slash and burn and conquer these men, these spirit and these beasts by the anointing and the authority of the Most High. All right. We need to understand this. But we also need to understand how the spirits that inhabit these individuals to make them think like beasts, we need to understand the spirit that is in them and how they think in their psychopathic ways and how they're always bent with the evil inclination. All right. So let's go to the book of Jubilees and let's study about Esau because the worst kind of creature and beast that we would encounter out here is the beast of Esau. And we're going to read about how Esau thought here in Jubilees chapter 37. All right. And listen to Esau's mentality, because this is the mentality that these spirits and these beasts and these men who have the attitude of beast, this is their same mentality. All right. Here's what Esau said in Jubilees 37, 18. It, is, it says, Matter of fact, let's go up further. When Jacob was having uh, a conversation with Esau, it said, but Jacob would not believe until they came very near to the tower and he closed the gates of the tower and he stood on the battlements and spake to his brother Esau and said, noble is the comfort wherewith thou hast come to comfort me for my wife who has died. Is this the oath that thou didst swear to thy father and again to thy mother before they died? Thou hast broken the oath and on the moment that thou didst swear to thy father was thou condemned. What Jacob is talking about here is Esau made an oath to Isaac and Rebekah that he would never try to harm Jacob. But he broke the oath because now he's come to Jacob's city after Jacob's wife has died to try to attack Jacob. Why? Because Esau has this beast mentality. And this is the same spirit and mentality that we have to be equipped to war against. Listen to what Esau said. It says, and then Esau answered and said unto him, neither the children of men nor the beast of the earth have any oath of righteousness, which in swearing they have sworn forever. But every day they devise evil against one another and how each may slay his adversary and his foe. And thou dost hate me and my children forever. And there is no observing the tie of brotherhood with thee. So Esau was saying that he gets his cue from the creatures and beasts in nature. Esau was saying that he doesn't desire to be a noble man because when he looks at the beast and the creatures of the earth, they are not noble. They war against each other and slay each other and they have a bloodthirst. So Esau was saying that he has the, he chooses to have the nature of beast and go about with a narcissistic sociopathic mentality to conquer and have lust for bloodshed and have lust for envy. So Esau chooses the beast nature. He chooses to think and act like the beast not like a noble man, all right? We have to understand these are the spirits of the beast that we have to go to war against. Listen to what Esau says here next, because it's given us a glimpse into the mind of the spirits and the beast and the men that we have to overcome in this wilderness, all right? It says, Esau said, hear these words which I declare unto thee. If the boar can change its skin and make its bristles as soft as wool, or if it can cause horns to sprout forth on its head like the horns of a stag or of a sheep, then will I observe the tie of brotherhood with thee. And if the breast separated themselves from their mother, for thou hast not been a brother to me. And if the wolves make peace with the lambs so as not to devour or do them violence, and if their hearts are toward them for good, then shall be peace in my heart towards thee. And if the lion becomes the friend of the ox and makes peace with him, and if he is bound under one yoke with him and plows with him, then will I make peace with thee. And when the raven becomes white as the Raza, then know that I have loved thee and shall make peace with thee. Thou shalt be rooted out and thy son shall be rooted out and there shall be no peace for thee. So Esau basically said, I'm at war with you for eternity. We are eternal enemies and I choose to attack you like a beast. That's what Esau told him. So understand, we are going to encounter human beings in this wilderness who have that same heart as Esau and that same mentality. That's why they have to be dealt with with righteous violence. All right. 
We can't plead with these people except with the sword and with the arrow, period. These individuals are narcissistic, sociopathic, so we have to meet them with the edge of the sword, all right? That's why I listen to what it says Jacob did next. And when Jacob saw that he was so evilly disposed towards him with his heart and with all his soul as to slay him, and that he had come springing like the wild boar, which comes upon, upon the spear that pierces and kills it and recoils not from it. Then he spake to his own and to his servants that they should attack him and kill all his companions. All right. So Jacob had to give the kill command. And we read in the book of Jasher how Esau's head was cut completely off. Esau got beheaded. And that's what we have to do as well. We have to behead Esau. We have to behead the spider viper. Because that spirit that is in Esau is that spider viper spirit. Listen to what it says in Jasher 28, 19 through 20. It said, and Esau was continually hunting in the fields to bring home what he could get. So did Esau all the days. And Esau was a designing and deceitful man, one who hunted after the hearts of men and inveigled them. And Esau was a valiant man in the field. So there we see that Esau not only hunted after animals, he hunted after the hearts of men. He was a soul hunter. All right. And that's the spirit of the spider viper. The spider viper is that beast and that creature that is even more venomous and dangerous than the scorpions that we read about in Revelation 9. The spider viper is the spirit that has an Esau mentality, that it hunts animals, it hunts men, and it hunts the hearts of men. So that spider viper spirit is a spirit that hunts the souls of men. And it talks about that in the book of Second Enoch, chapters one through three, where it talks about those who have the spirit of the spider viper who practice sin against nature, uh, child corruption after the sodomitic fashion, magic making, enchantment, devilish witchcrafts, who boast of wicked deeds, stealing, lies, calumnies, envy, rancor, fornication, murder, and who steal the souls of men. All right. So the spider viper spirit is a spirit that seeks to steal the souls of men. All right. The viper strikes at the heel like the most high said in the garden that the viper would strike the heel of man. And the spider seeks to catch us in a web. That's why they call it the World Wide Web and the Internet. It's a net and a web that's trying to catch the souls of men. That's why you see so many people that go online, they get caught up in all sorts of vices like pornography and the deep web. They get caught up in all sorts of uh, strange vanities and uh, the habitations of cruelty and just sick depravity. They get caught in the web of the spider viper. Their soul gets stolen. They get hunted by that Esau spirit that is the spirit of the spider viper. And the only way to conquer the spirit of the spider viper is to slash it and burn the net and to burn the web, to burn the nest. We have to slash the spider viper and burn its nest. That's the only way for it to be conquered. That's why in the days of Joshua, the Most High would command them to slaughter everybody, man, woman, beast. Don't leave nobody alive and burn everything in the city. Why? Because the Most High knew that they were going to war against the spirit of the spider viper. All right. And it talks about this spirit in Isaiah chapter 59, verse two through eight. Listen to what it says here. It says, but your iniquities have separated you between you and the Most High and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness. None calleth for justice nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. Listen to this. They hatch viper eggs and weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth, and that which is crushed breaketh out into a viper. So here the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah 59, he was describing something that he saw in the spirit realm of a creature that was half viper, half spider. He said that he saw the spider's web with eggs in it, and out of the egg came a viper. So it was a spider viper, a creature that was a mixture between viper and spider. All right? This is that spirit that we have to slash it and burn it. We have to behead it and burn it. And we have to kill all the eggs as well. Because as it said here in the scripture, that the eggs will birth a viper. 
So the eggs have to be killed as well as the host of the spirit. All right. Are you seeing this in the spirit? We have to attack this spirit of the spider viper. It also talks about it in Isaiah chapter 30, verse six. It says the burden of the beast of the south into the land of trouble and anguish from whence come the young and old lion, the viper and the fiery flying serpent. So this spider viper, it's so powerful that it even has the power of flight. And you can even research this whenever you study different species of spider, that they are spiders who can actually jump and fly for long distances. So here it's saying that this creature, the spider viper, has the ability of flight, all right? So these are spirits that travel in packs and they can move long distances and attach to people, often through the internet and through the world wide web. These spider viper spirits are the ones that oversee this world wide web, this spider's web, all right? Now let's go to Job chapter 20, verse four through 16 and read some more about this it says knowest now not this of old since man was placed upon the earth that the triumphing of the wicked is short and the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment though his excellency mount up to the heavens and his head reach unto the clouds yet he shall perish forever like his own dung they which have seen him shall say where is he he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found yea he shall be chased away as a vision of the night the eye also which saw him shall see him no more, neither shall his place any more behold him. His children shall seek to please the poor, and his hand shall restore their goods. His bones are full of the sin of his youth, which shall lie down with him in the dust. Though wickedness be sweet in his mouth, though he hide it under his tongue, though he spare it and forsake it not, but keep it still within his mouth, yet his meat is in his bowls is turned. It is the gall of ass within him. He hath swallowed down riches, and he shall vomit them up again. The Most High shall cast them out of his belly. He shall suck the poison of the ass, and the viper's tongue shall slay him. So here it's given a description of those individuals who become the victim of the spider viper. It's those individuals who practice all those things, the vanity, the wickedness, the lies, the hypocrisy. It's saying that this type of individual, their triumph will be short and their joy will be but for a moment. But they will be stung and bitten and caught in the web of that spider viper. All right. So the way we can avoid getting caught in the web of the spider viper or getting bit by the spider viper is number one, we must not be negligent. One thing we need to understand about the uh, spider viper is that it weaves a web. And you can find this image. Um, you, can, you can check it out in certain books, do some research about it. But there's an actual creature that is half spider, half viper. All right? And this is the type of uh, beast spirit that we have to slaughter because it is out here on the hunt. And it, it, is, it is hunting for the hearts and souls of men. OK, so the way we conquer it is not to be negligent because a spider builds its web in places that have not been tended to. So in places that have not been cleaned is where the spider will attach to and the spider can go in many different places. As it says in Proverbs chapter 30, 28, it said the spider taketh hold with her hands and is in king's palaces. So. That's given us a jewel of wisdom that the spider even has the ability to kill a king because the spider viper can crawl into the king's palace. So we need to understand that as kings and priests of the Most High, we can, we can be destroyed and killed by the sting and the bite of the spider because the spider has the ability to go within the king's innermost chamber. So we have to be careful not to be negligent with things. Like, for instance, in the book, The Legends of the Hebrews, it talks about uh, Manasseh and how the reason that the harsh judgment came upon Manasseh is that he did not keep the command to keep the altar clean. The altar of the priest, you know, that we just read about in the scriptures, it had to be kept clean morning and evening. Every time that they did sacrifices and offerings on it, they had to clean it off morning and evening. It had to be cleaned. But in the days of Manasseh, they were not cleaning the altar. And what was taking place at the altar is that there were spiders and spider webs collecting around the altar because the priest was being negligent of their duties. 
All right, let's read about that. It says, Amon, the son of Manasseh, surpassed his father in wickedness. He was in the habit of saying, my father was a sinner from early childhood. So uh, pardon me, this is Amon, the son of Manasseh. All right, so this is Amon, Manasseh's son. It said, Amon, the son of Manasseh, surpassed his father in wickedness. He was in the habit of saying, my father was a sinner from early childhood, and in his old age, he did penance. I shall do the same. First, I shall satisfy the desires of my heart, and afterward I shall return to the Most High. And indeed, he was guilty of more grievous sins than his predecessor. He burned the Torah. Under him, the place of the altar was covered with spider webs, and as though a purpose to set at naught the Hebrew faith, he committed the worst sort of incest, a degree more heinous than his father's crime of a similar nature. Thus, he executed the first half of his maxim literally for repentance however he was given no time and death cut him off in the fullness of his sinful ways all right so Amon, the son of manasseh he was negligent in the days that he reigned the priest didn't even clean off the altar to where it was spiders crawling all over the uh, altar of the most high and the altar was supposed to be kept holy and clean always but under Amon. He didn't even clean the altar. He was negligent. He was a negligent king. So since he was a negligent king, the spirit of the spider viper crawled in the king's palace and bit him. And as it said in those precepts, he died before he got a chance to repent because his mentality was my father Manasseh lived a lot of years in wickedness and then repented in old age. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to neglect the laws and commands of the most high. And then when I become an old man, I'm going to repent. That was his mentality. But as we see, he ended up getting bit by the spider viper and he was not able to get repentance. So his soul was cast into hell before he got a chance to repent because he kept putting it off and putting it off. He allowed the altar of his soul to get overgrown with spiders and spider webs. He allowed his heart to get infested with spider vipers. The net of spider vipers enclosed his heart. The web of spider vipers enclosed his heart and it took him down. It destroyed him. All right. And that will be the same judgment on us if we are negligent kings and negligent priests and we allow the altar to be neglected. If we allow the altar of prayer, the altar of fasting, the offer of giving our bodies as a living sacrifice to the most high, the altar of declaring spiritual warfare against these many different spirits and beasts. If we neglect to do that, then the spider's web will form over us and we will become prey to the spider viper. But what we have to do, we have to take the same mentality that Joshua did, where he burnt those cities and destroyed man, beast, everybody, and then burnt everything. All right. That's how we have to do, brothers and sisters, to conquer the spirit of the spider viper. We have to go in and slaughter everything and leave nothing breathing and burn everything down to conquer that spirit. We have to destroy that nest. We have to destroy the origin of that spirit and find out how it got in and let not none of it get out. All right. Hallelujah. All praise to the most high. Yeah. Let's go to those scriptures where it talks about how uh, Joshua and them burnt down those cities and burned it to the ground after they conquered it, all right? Yah reigns forever. Deuteronomy chapter 20, starting at verse 15, it says, Thus shalt thou do unto all the cities which are very off from thee, which are not of the cities of these nations, but of the cities of these people, which the Most High thy Elohim doth give thee for an inheritance. Thou shalt save alive nothing that breatheth. Deuteronomy 20, 16. So the Most High commanded us, whenever we go in to those places that have that spirit of the spider viper, we have to slay everything, man, woman, child, beast, and burn it to the ground. That's the only way to deal with that spider viper spirit. We have to slay everything and burn everything and burn the nest, all right? We have to be absolutely relentless against that spirit of the spider viper because if we don't destroy the eggs, if we don't destroy the web, then all that'll happen is those eggs will birth another viper and another spider. We don't burn down that web, then another spider will come along. And we can't be negligent. We have to keep the corners clean so no spider viper will creep into the, our king's palace 
and take down our throne. All right. We got to do this. Hallelujah. All praise to the most high. So let's continue to conquer that uh, spider viper spirit. And we're going to end with the same precepts that I end with every single time. And, you know, it reminds me before I go, I just want to say something else. Whenever it talks about how Amon, one thing it said about him is that along with not keeping the altar clean, it said he also burned the Torah. He burned the book of the law, meaning he cast the commandments to the side and didn't bother with them. That's the same spirit we see today. Anybody who says the Torah is done away and cast the Torah to the side, they have the spirit of Amun, not the spirit of a man, the spirit of Amun, the son of Manasseh, who caused the altar to get uh, infested with spiders because he burned the Torah and did away with it. Instead of burning the Torah, what we're going to burn is the nest and the web of the spider viper. So it's a curse upon all people out there who push the Taurus to the side and say it's done away with and don't pay attention to it. They are allowing their self to get infested by a nest of spider vipers. All right. Let's go to Psalm 58, 10. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Apocalypse of Abraham, chapter 29, verse 8. The righteous shall spit in the face of those who defame them. Second Ezra, chapter 2, verse 28. The heathen shall envy thee, but they shall be able to do nothing against thee. Baruch chapter 4, verse 25. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the Most High. For thine enemy I persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and tread upon his neck. Enoch chapter 98, verse 12. Woe to you who love deeds of iniquity. Why do you hope for good for yourselves? Know that you will be given into the hands of the righteous, and they will cut your throats and kill you, and will not have mercy on you. Jubilees chapter 12, 20 through 22. Most high, please deliver me from the hands of evil spirits who have dominion over the thoughts of men's hearts and let them not lead me astray from thee. The right path before me, prosper it in the hands of your servant that I may fulfill it and that I may not walk in the deceitfulness of my heart. Yah reigns forever. Shalom. 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 All right, y'all. All right. I'm, I see True Royal has joined us from the hospital. <laughs> so I'm glad to see you here, but I also want you to take it easy and focus on yourself getting better. So everybody, thank you so much for being here. You know, um, again, just as a reminder, next week, starting Saturday evening into Sunday evening, I will be doing my day of atonement you know i know some people are doing it on different days but that is the day i will be doing it so i'll be fasting from the evening of saturday the 24th to the 25th i believe which is next saturday to sunday so uh, thank you for being here. And as always, I pray that the Most High keep his most powerful angels around for protection for each and every one of you. Shalom, family.